Lights Out is the newest big Hollywood horror movie from Warner Brothers. The film is based on a short film with the same title from 2013, that pretty much went viral and offers to transform it into a full feature film came quickly for the filmmakers. With a production budget of $5 million and a modern horror master James Wan on board as a producer, everything should be set up for young and promising first time director David F. Sandberg to show his craftsmanship and deliver a scary ride. Before going into this movie, I would like to say that I'm quite happy about this new trend of young filmmakers being picked up by big studios after they have shown their talents in either short films or very small indie films. And regarding the lights out short, I absolutely enjoyed it for what it was and understand why the big studios wanted to do something more with the concept. That being said, sadly I did not care for this movie whatsoever. The film starts with a nice little homage if you will to the short film before we start to learn about the main characters of the movie. The story has a simple premise, a ghostly creature is haunting a fractured family or tree. The main focus is on Rebecca, who has a strained relationship with her mother Sophie. Rebecca's younger brother, Martin, lives alone with Sophie, and when the creature, who lives in the darkness, is starting to torment him, Rebecca has to face the past and try to get true to her mother in order to keep her little brother safe. Rebecca played by the lovely actress Teresa Palmer, is the character we as a movie audience are supposed to attach ourselves to and care for. This is thrown out of the window after only 10 or 15 minutes, as the very first scene we see her in, she kinda acts like a self-centered bitch towards her boyfriend, or love toy as she basically treats him as. She doesn't want anything more than some late night loving, and that's all fine and well, but in the very next scene she does bring him along to pick up her little brother after the school has shown concern about his lack of sleep recently. It's a good example of the inconsistency of the characters that kept annoying me throughout the movie. The mother, Sophie, played by Maria Bello, is a neurotic and fragile woman. Even if Bello is a good actress, I wish that they had the character show more motherly love towards her children, and brought out some more conflict within her. This is a character they should have been able to sell us some more on and make us care for. There was time available here to have some scenes early on showing the relationship between Sophie and Rebecca, which was desperately needed in my opinion. The fact that I didn't care for Sophie at all makes the ending fail for me, and if you know how the ending plays out then you know why you would have to be more emotionally invested in a character for it all to work. There's a lot of character drama within the film, which did also do a nice job in letting the evil creature be involved with, but for me nothing of it worked at all. There are ways to do this nicely, usually by doing it very subtle, but here they hit us over the head with everything constantly reminding us that the family is broken. It's almost like they didn't have any faith in that the viewers themselves could read these things without having the characters spell it out for you. I also disliked the dialogue that was written for the characters, and I'd even go as far as calling some of it cringeworthy. The best character in the movie is the previous mentioned love toy, Brett, played by Alexander de Persia. He comes off as a damn good guy here, doing the right thing constantly and just being very good hearted. Which is very cool, as after first look at him, you would expect it to be the total opposite. So, why am I spending so much time on the characters here, as honestly, that's not always what's looked at this closely in a horror movie. Well, the movie itself tries its best to focus on this thing, so that's why it's even more necessary to have the characters and the conflict work. If I actually care for the characters, then I'm sure my look on this movie would be quite different. When it comes to the horror element, it fails in creating any suspense for me. One concern I had after watching the trailer was that this would be jump scares after jump scares, which it actually was not. There are jump scares in it, of course, but I actually thought it was lacking a few. I'm surprised at how few scenes were in it where they actually tried to bring the scares, as the film turned out to be very kind in that regard. I saw the film in cinema with a young crowd and it didn't feel like any of the young teenagers got very scared or got any good jumps out of the movie either. The evil creature actually worked better for me in the short film, as it had a more unique look in that one. Here they resolved back to the more generic female horror creature, although to be fair, the look would have worked just fine in a more scary film. One annoying aspect was that it kept breaking its own rules in that the creature could affect stuff outside of the darkness at times, something which is just not necessary as there are plenty of settings within a home where they could have some fun setting up scares with this creature without going against its own rules. All negatives aside, this was director David Sandberg's first feature film though, so hopefully we'll improve with a future project, which does include a sequel to Annabelle, which is in production as of right now. 
Even though I'm a big fan of James Wan and what he's been doing for the last years, I have to question his skills as a producer, as neither this one or Demonic, which came out last year, has been any good at all. Oh well, like you can clearly tell, I did not enjoy Lights Out. I would like to say though that it has received way more positive reviews from others than me, so take that into consideration if you are considering going to cinema and see it. If you trust my opinion though, then skip it and see something else instead. Lights Out is a disappointment of the year for me, and it gets a poor 1 out of 5. I am guessing others out there had a better experience with this film than what I did, so let me know in the comment section below what you liked about the film. Or if you also disliked it, let me know about that as well. Regardless of what you thought of the film, I hope you enjoyed my review. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you want to be updated on all the future horror movie reviews I will be doing. Thank you for watching, and make sure to keep your lights, uh, fuck it.